Welcome to the Life's Hard Succeed Anyway podcast, where you will hear transformational stories, positive encouragement, and practical strategies to help you grow your mindset, reach your potential, live your dreams, and experience a purpose-driven, impact-filled life. Here's your host, Alan Blaine. Okay, this is Alan Blaine, and I am fired up to interview our special guest today, Kristen Butler. Let me tell you a little bit about Kristen before we get started. So Kristen Butler is a best-selling author and the CEO of Power of Positivity, a community with over, get this, 50 million followers globally. Kristen was awarded Success Magazine's Emerging Entrepreneur of 2022. She is a leader, a writer, a visionary in personal development with a huge heart and captivating authenticity. Her mission is to uplift the planet. I love that. Kristen passionately started Power of Positivity in 2009, so 15 years ago, after completely transforming her life from rock bottom, which we'll get to hear about that here in a moment, using the power of positive thinking. Kristen contributes her transformation to a positive mindset, her relationship with God, and an active plant-based lifestyle. Kristen, welcome to the Life's Hard Succeed Anyway podcast. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Hi, Alan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this conversation. I'm excited about the conversation too. We've been trying for a while to align our schedule. So this is going to be fun today. (laughs) Absolutely. I've given our listeners, you know, a brief introduction of who Kristen Butler is, but can you just kind of give us a little bit of the backstory of who you are, how you got here, and just share as much or as little as you would like to share leading up to this point? Yeah. So right now, you know, I'm a proud mom of two girls and I'm really proud of that because at one point I was told that I would never have children. And so, yeah, I'm the CEO of Power of Positivity. I've wrote several books and really my goal is to share my story and inspiration that has helped me to get out of places where I felt stuck or anxious or depressed or when I was at rock bottom. You know, I started Power Positivity, not necessarily as a business, but just with the sole desire to help people who felt like I did when I was at rock bottom, when I was struggling, when I thought that I couldn't, you know, go another day. And so my life completely transformed from rock bottom. And I really credit it to living a positive lifestyle. Literally every area can change when you embrace positive habits, positive thinking, you know, and goodwill. That's awesome. So tell, let's, let's just dive right into this positive habits, positive mindset, positive lifestyle that got you out of your rock bottom. And we'll get to your rock bottom later. I can't wait to dive into that too. But can you give us some examples of what were some of the things that you started implementing or things you've learned even along the way to pull yourself out of the rock bottom, so to speak, that were in this line of positivity and personal growth and development? Mm, yes, absolutely. You know, at rock bottom, I was a pla- at a place where I was having negative emotions. My lifestyle habits weren't really lining up with my goals. I wasn't eating in a way that was really nourishing my body. I wasn't, you know, um, connecting with my loved ones. I wasn't even listening to God necessarily. I was just kind of on a wheel and working day to day and just trying to make it right. Just trying to you know, eventually earn the American dream and be an entrepreneur. And so at rock bottom, I realized that I needed to really listen to that inner voice, listen to God and what he was saying. He was saying, take care of yourself, Kristen, you know, eat the right foods, go for a walk, move your body, drink more water. It was really the simple things. Be grateful, be grateful for what you have. I know you want more, but be grateful for right now. And As I started to just do these simple little things every day consistently, things really started to change for me, but it was an internal change. And then my external started to change. And so that's so profound because sometimes we we neglect those little things or we forget that they're so important to not just our well-being and our longevity, but our mood and our productivity when we are working. I love that. So if I understand you right, Kristen, you're saying you started doing some things outwardly 
correct me if I'm wrong, whether you felt like it or not in your rock bottom, in your, as you said, anxiety or whatever it is, I know we'll get more details into that later, but whatever you were dealing with at the time that then changed how you felt inwardly, or am I even saying that backwards? Mm, you know, it was more of an inward. I had to start just to get out of bed. I really had to start looking at myself the way God looked at me and not with these negative labels and beliefs that I started to adopt within. And so I think oftentimes we, you know, listen to this negative self-talk and think it's real and it's truly not. So I think it was like more of an inward first to just get me going. And then it was enough that I could start taking external action as well. And in my habits, it's, it's almost like this beautiful cycle that if you allow to continue to happen, you can grow more and more and, and have a better and better life. I love it. So then walk, walk us through the process. So it's 2009, you're at your rock bottom. I know we're going to go back there, but then you start making some of these changes and things start getting better. How do you go from that in 2009 to 15 years later here in 2024 with 50 million followers, a book, uh, a couple workbooks too, I believe, maybe even that go along with that book. I'm not sure, but just how did that happen? How does that happen? I mean, you've had incredible success and, you know, done things already at, I'm sure much younger than me that many people will never accomplish in their lifetime. I really believe in daily consistency. So I was passionate about something. And even though I didn't really have very many people liking things or interacting, I believed in something and I just stayed persistent. And so I think number one, that's key. But I also looked within at my skill sets and my passions. And I was very passionate about social media since I was a teenager. Um, I would even like go to the library and sneak on um, some of the social media sites that were back then, right? It was bolt.com. There wasn't even my space. It was very rudimentary. And I loved social media at such a young age. And I became like an influencer. Like they started sending me all these like free things, you know, perfumes and crest whitening strips, all these things as a teenager. And I was like, this is amazing. You know, I was connecting with people all over the world. Um, and I was in a small town from Pennsylvania. And so to me, I saw so much value in social media at such a young age that I knew that whatever I did, that it had to include that. And so I had the background in social media, but I also had a background in journalism. And so I felt, I feel like those two things really helped pair and prepare me to launch Power of Positivity because then we launched a website. And that's very much like a media site. And we talk about all things positivity and how to overcome negativity. And so for me, I feel like I harnessed my gifts and use them in a way with passion and purpose. And so if we could all do that, whatever lights us up, whatever skill sets we were given at a very young age, go back to those things and find ways to develop them and to grow them. I love that. Such great advice. And if I heard you right, you're, you're, tapped into what you're something you're really passionate about and use that with skills that you were acquiring and have continued, I'm sure to acquire along the way as it relates to social media and just put yourself out there. Did you always feel like it? Was it comfortable? I mean, I, that's one thing I still struggle with to this day. And I think it, pretty much everybody I talk to, they have insecurities, they have fears, especially putting themselves out there on social media, especially when it comes to putting themselves out on video, God forbid, a live video or anything of the sort, like how, what was that like? Was it, was it easy for you or is it still easy for you? And how do you, how do you overcome that if it wasn't? You know, initially it was me behind the brand, right? For much of the time, much of those 15 years, this summer we celebrate 15 years, but I only started my personal brand and really started growing it within these last few years, maybe five to seven because I, I didn't want to be the face, right? I wanted to be behind the brand. So yes, then when I started to come out into my personal brand, yes, these things are challenges, but I learned that you really have to just be yourself and be authentic and be true to that person. And then you'll attract the right people. You know, don't worry about the trolls or the people who don't like what you post or don't feel the same way. Don't even give any attention to that because the more attention you give to that, the more it grows 
the more your insecurity will grow and then you'll kind of dial back. So you have to be consistent, stay true to yourself and know that from that place, you will grow and things will, you know, get better. I think when you look at the algorithm and see what people like about what you post, it's important to post those things, but to also make sure that that's like who you truly are and what you're embodying and what you want to grow for your network. Because you can go down that path of, oh, this is what they like the most. And then maybe you don't like that aspect the most. So you just have to stay true to yourself and keep using that as the North Star. That's really good advice because I could imagine if we just follow what everybody else likes, that could lead us into a place where we're just speaking of authenticity. We're not authentic anymore if we ever were. And that's not a great place to be, is it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm sure you understand. It's like, then you're surrounded by people that you really don't have anything in common. You know, you were just trying to, you know, go viral or, you know, give people content that they wanted. So it's so important to stay true to yourself. Your tribe will come. The connections will come. All of that will be in, in such a flow state versus like a full force state. And so, yeah, even for me, I had to embrace going live, you know, going on IG live and doing more videos. And I think when you have the right people around you, they can see that and encourage you. So I had friends that were like, Hey, Kristen, I think you need to put some more video content out. And I'm like, well, you know, I think people just like my quotes. They don't want to <laughs> see me, you know, and even now I still have to battle with that. Like, no, put the videos out there. You know, it's okay if it doesn't get as good as the quotes. And you have to have that conversation with yourself and encourage yourself on a daily basis. I'm glad I'm not the only one then. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> no, I think that hopefully that's encouraging to see and hear somebody of your level of success even just being vulnerable enough and authentic enough to say, yeah, I still have fear. I still have to deal with this. But that's the one thing I've learned, you know, over the years is successful people, they don't, they're, they're not immune to the same fears that everybody else has. They just keep hitting the courage button and doing the right thing anyway. And I think that's encouraging for people to know, because I think it's so easy for people to think, well, oh, it must come easy to them. Oh, they must not have fears. She must not have any insecurities. And that's just not true, is it? You know, consistency is key. I can admit that when you're consistent about something and it becomes who you are, it is a, it does lighten the resistance. You know what I mean? So that does help. So it is encouraging to know when you continually act with courage and faith and trust, the process does become a bit easier. Yeah. Because consistency really does win. So who you want to be, start doing that every single day. And no, it's not always easy. There's going to be challenges. You're going to have negative thoughts, but that's part of the process. And that's when you have to speak over those things instead of letting them take over your life. I love that. Great segue to your book. T tell uh, our listeners a little bit about your book, why you wrote it, what's it about, who's it for? Yeah, absolutely. The last book I wrote was The Comfort Zone. And, you know, part of my rock bottom story was actually me having to overcome my limiting beliefs that I had about life is outside of your comfort zone. Your dreams are outside of your comfort zone. You know, you only grow outside of your comfort zone. These very common phrases that we talk about to me were actually very toxic because what they did was made me become a workaholic and always pushing myself and never giving myself a chance to be comfortable. In fact, I would shame myself for doing anything that wasn't productive or difficult or challenging. And so at that rock bottom, I started to embrace a new philosophy. What would be comfortable for me? I had to start asking this question because at that point, I I'd never really catered to that. I was always shaming myself for it. And when I let go of that shame and asked myself, hey, what's going to be fun for you? It doesn't have to be work related or productivity related. Life started to really shift. It was like this feel good factor that lit me up and really allowed me to be myself, give myself a break, relax a little bit. And I think we all need that. You know, people talk about there's no work-life balance, but there really is when we can build our day around the habits that foster our well-being. And so I started to embrace my comfort zone. And from that place, 
I started to heal and it was a very nourishing place. It, you know, most people think that there is, you know, no action in the comfort zone and it's a small static place where nothing grows. I found that it actually can be as big as you allow it to be and it can grow and expand and that the goal is actually to get comfortable with more and more things. I love this quote that I actually read after I wrote my book um, from Alex Honnold and he is a rock climber and he's in the movie Free Solo. Have you ever seen it? I've heard all about it, but I have not watched that movie yet. Yeah. Incredible. I mean, can you imagine rock climbing with no harness? Like, ah, like that sounds to me scary. Right. And, you know, that's his lifestyle and that's what he lives for. But he says he harnesses his comfort zone to combat fear. And it's so powerful because I feel like that's what I did. When I was at rock bottom, I was in a very fearful place. and when I harnessed my comfort zone and stopped shaming myself and actually started expanding it, it really helped me deal with fears, anxieties, stress, you know, panic attacks, the things that I was struggling with. I love that, Kristen. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what my perspective of the comfort zone is, has been to set up a question for you. Okay. Yeah, so, I'd love um, it. And, and how you, how you perceive that, because I, I want to learn right along with our, our listeners. So. I've always in my mind pictured it, you know, people talk about, I think you said this, you step out all, you know, the saying, all growth takes place outside of one's comfort zone. I think you mentioned that, you know, it's kind of a common saying. And I believe that, um, I believe that. And, but instead of what I do psychologically, instead of thinking, Hey, when I step outside my comfort zone to do something that's uncomfortable, like Facebook live. Okay. Um, starting a podcast a year and a half ago, the list goes on and on and on. Well, it's uncomfortable because I've never done it, but mentally I think, okay, I'm not stepping outside my comfort zone. I'm expanding my comfort zone because I know that eventually if I step out enough times and hit that courage button, like I was saying a minute ago, that eventually my comfort zone is going to expand to include that thing that I'm now competent in. And so now it's part of my comfort zone, right or wrong. I don't know. It's just, it's just how my mind has worked um, to help me stretch and grow and things. And so, and, and the analogy I would liken it to would be that everything was kind of uncomfortable until it become, became comfortable from chewing solid food at whatever age we were when it was running down our face, you know, to taking our first steps and falling to riding a bike to trying to say dad, dad, mom, ma, you know, everything is kind of uncomfortable until it becomes comfortable. And so I always had that idea of the comfort zone expands to include more and more and more. I don't know if if you your you know perspective is perspective is different than that on than me on that. I'm totally okay either way. I said all that to really ask the question, uh, and you can comment on that as much or as little as you'd like. The question I have for you is, I can see how what you said. If everything, if 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 the focus is always being outside the comfort zone because I want to grow, because I want to improve, because I whatever anxiety, stress, tireless days and nights, and what I heard you say is like once you did something different and changed, I don't know, physically changed what you were doing, or if it was just a perspective shift, things got better for you. And obviously you've had amazing success, so it's working. My question is, can growth still take place inside the comfort zone? Am I wrong to think that all growth does take place outside the comfort zone? I guess that's my ultimate question. You can comment on anything you want. And if it does take place inside the comfort zone, how? Because I'd like to see that clearer for mm. myself. No, I think we really believe very similar things. So I see the comfort zone as at the very edge. That's our growth zone. And kind of like stretching, when we stretch, it's a little uncomfortable, but then it releases and relaxes the muscles, right? Because right. We're, we're, but if we stretch too much, then we could injure ourselves, <laughs> right? And it hurts. Yeah. So it's that careful balance of pushing the edges of your comfort zone and, and that growth and then expanding it. So we're very similar. I love it. This was a mindset shift that I had to have so I could stop shaming myself. Because I think so much of us shame ourselves for rest or mm -hmm. sleep. I mean, there were days sometimes I wasn't sleeping. And in your 20s, I guess you think you can get away with that. But you really can't because I wasn't necessarily getting away with that. The consequences came um, when I hit rock bottom. And so 
I see it as just a healthier way to look at it for people who do want to succeed and have this, you know, high level of passion inside and they want more in life, but they also need to learn to balance, right? So they're not living out there, not living in survival mode that will eventually put them in a complacent zone because they've just forced and pushed so much. And then they gave up. I I see that too much. And so that's kind of why I created this solution. I love it. And I can't wait to read the book. Thank Um, you. By the way, since we're talking about the book, how do, how can our listeners get your book? You know, it's in all bookstores and it's on Amazon. I think Amazon has it almost 50% off. So. All right. Wow. And I've heard great things about it. So I can't wait to read it. What would you say has, I mean, you've had a lot of success in the last 15 years. Um, I'm still just mind blown that you've got 50 million followers in 15 years. I've got to start coming to taking some notes from you, but what would you say has been one of the keys to your success, Kristen, that maybe our listeners can be taking notes and glean something from? Yeah, that's a good question. There's so many different things, but a positive lifestyle has really been the key and not to just kind of go back to that, but that's why I created the power of positivity. And it's not just about, you know, think happy thoughts, right? It's about reframing your challenges as opportunities. It's about taking consistent action every single day to be the person that you want to be or the person that you are and working towards those goals. It's, it's about living in the way that God sees you and not the way society says that you are, tells you that you are. It's about being mindful and intentional about your choices and the ways that you connect with other people. So I I truly believe that, yeah, a positive lifestyle is the key to success for, and you see it when you see successful people, they have very specific habits and it's all around a positive lifestyle. 100%. Hundred percent. I mean, it, you'd be hard pressed to go find a highly successful person in any industry that is not positive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a challenge. Go try and find somebody that's highly successful that is a negative pessimist. I don't know if they exist. That's a good point. Yeah. You mentioned a lot of these skill sets and mindsets and perspective shifts really helped pull you out of your rock bottom fifteen years ago. I guess two thousand nine. Is that right? Yes, it would be like 2007. I think it was two years before I created Power Positivity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you take us back there uh, and just share what what was that like? Like what was, and and was that the biggest challenge of your life? I I always love asking our guests, you know, what is one or more of the bigger challenges you face to date? And we've got more ahead. We all know that there's more ahead. We just don't know what they are and when they're coming. But um, so easy to think that, oh, yay, 50 million followers, you know, author, all the success. It must be easy for you. But, but everyone has their challenges. So I'd love to hear what yours were and what, what that rock bottom was for you. Mm. Yeah. So in 2007, I had lost a very successful business. I was an eBay power seller and I had created that business rebounding from a past burnout that I had in college. You know, I, I was constantly burning myself out. And this was really almost the final straw for me in 2007. It was like every area of my life was falling apart. You know, I was over 300 pounds. I eBay shut my store down because I couldn't keep up with the amount of orders that I had. So I was doing really well. It's just, I couldn't keep up, you know, losing the business put us in bankruptcy And working so hard, I really had lost connections with a lot of my family and friends that I had. And then I had went to the doctor because I, you know, of course, wasn't feeling good and feeling very stressed, anxious. I was having panic attacks. And, you know, they said, hey, you have PCOS, you're, and you have so many cysts, you're, you're never going to have children. Like you, this is a reality for you. And at that point, I thought, wow, I really messed up. Like I failed way too much. And there was this sense of maybe I failed God too much. Like maybe he forgot about me. Maybe I'm not good enough anymore. And it was a really dark place for me. And I know that's early twenties and you would think, oh, come on, you know, you have so much time, but it really felt when any, anybody hits a rock bottom, it's that feeling of just like the numbness and that you just don't even care about making it from to another day. And so that's where I really was. 
And it put me in bed for two weeks straight. Like I just literally had burnt myself out so much and was filled with so much pain and negativity and regret that I didn't even care about getting out of bed. And so from that place, you know, uh, my husband had called the doctor and I started seeing a therapist. And that's when she was like, Kristen, you know, after talking with me for some time, she said, you got to be yourself. You got to live a life for you and who you really are. You're neglecting you and yourself. And so that's where I had to start connecting with why am I here? You know, who am I? Like, what do I like to do? What do I want to do? What feels good? And from that place, I started to, you know, like I said, start walking around the block and those walks eventually became longer. Then I started going to the gym, right? I started, you know, eating healthier foods. And as that became, I started eating healthier and healthier. And so it just really started to spiral in this very beautiful, positive direction, which did lead me to create power positivity because I thought, wow, I was in such a dark place and I was able to turn that around. Could you imagine so many people who are in such dark places and they think that that's it? And I've got to help those people who feel stuck and feel like they can't get out. I love that. So what was the aha moment? It was the, was it the conversation with your therapist and just the realization that you've got to figure out what you're doing here, what your purpose is, what you're passionate about? Is that what I heard you say? Is that, is that accurate or something else? Yeah, it, that's definitely one of them. Very specifically, she was telling me about, and this was a very emotional moment about the show Munsters back then, like, they, you know, that's an old show, but they were doing right. repeats. So I was familiar with it. And, and she's like, you know, you're like Marilyn, you know, you're the positive one and you, you let the people around you make you feel like you were wrong with who you were. And so you stopped operating from that place. And so that was a really big aha moment for me because I felt seen. And I think sometimes all we need is we don't necessarily need advice. We just need to be seen. We need somebody to understand our pain and where we are. And that definitely was like an aha moment for me. That's so good. When you look in hindsight now and you look back over that season, it was dark. Sounds like it's how I, I can relate. I had a season very similar, actually less than 15 years ago, probably about 10 years ago. And I remember feeling that, you know, I woke up in a jail cell with a DUI and it's like, and I started just reevaluating, how did I get here and what am I doing? And, and, and at that point in my life, it just felt like, even as a Christian, at, at, uh, I felt like I just kind of lost my way. Quite frankly, I had lost my way. And it just, I, I, I didn't have trouble getting out of bed, but I did feel like, just like, what is, what am I doing? What is the purpose? Like, what, what, what am I supposed to be doing here? Anyway, so a lot of that I just can relate with, mm. but when you look back on that season or any other challenges in your past, how do you view them now? Like, how do you view past challenges? I guess is the question. You know, you have to look at challenges as stepping stones. Each one of them has a lesson. And if we take that lesson, it's like that next stepping stone that can get us higher. But if we ignore that lesson, you know, it's going to keep us down. We're here to grow. God wants us to expand and, you know, really to understand what the opportunity or what it was we needed to see from that challenge. There's always an opportunity to grow. And when you can have that growth mindset through the challenge and have that faith, it'll get you through. It always does. Like now I look back and I'm like, wow, no wonder, you know, I wasn't trusting and I wasn't listening and I wasn't having faith. And so I'm always doing that now. When a challenge comes, I, I don't let it shake me like it used to because I know like, what do I need to see from this? What is something I need to either change or pivot or grow from? What's the opportunity here? And when you look at it from that lens, it really lessens the, the blow, right? It lessens the pain from it. For sure. I love that perspective. And I was going to ask you, how does it make you view your future challenges that are coming? You just, mm. you just don't know when and where, and you answered it. I mean, you, you, it, it changes the lens, what you're saying, whereby you're looking at that challenge as, you're, as it's coming at you or you're walking through the next one with that, I don't know, maybe just a growth mindset, I guess, really. Like you're, you said, you're going to, what am I going to learn here? And I forget what all you said, but basically, what am I going to learn in this? And how is it going to benefit me or maybe others? 
in the process. I just love that. I think it's so important that people understand that because we're all going to face them. It's just a matter of time and how big and how small they may be. Yeah, absolutely. What advice would you give to somebody else who right now is like, hey, I, I, not only I know, are they coming in the future, like I'm in the middle of that right now. I'm back in Kristen's 2007, 2008, Alan's 2014, 2015. What, what do you say to that person? You know, the first thing I had to do was just be grateful that I had a roof over my head, like I said, and a bed to sleep on. So if you can embrace the power of gratitude and, and thankfulness, I think that's so important because, you know, in difficult times, we have, that's the, almost the only thing that can shift our perspective. You know, people can give us well-meaning advice, but we don't want to take action when we're in that place. We're like, oh, you don't understand what, where I am right now. But gratitude has that power. It's almost just like such a strong gift. And I know so many people talk about it, but that's because it really works. We have to be thankful for this present moment if we want more. I mean, they say, God says, I'm not going to give you more than you can handle. Well, if you can't handle what you have and be grateful for that, you're not going to get more. And so gratitude really can open so many doors. But simply in that moment, it can just make you feel more positive, feel more blessed, feel more optimistic. And that's that feeling is what will get you through and get you to start taking action, not the action necessarily. You've got to get through the feeling first so that it's truly authentic and you're not just, you know, putting rose colored glasses on and saying, I'm going to get through this. I'm just going to keep going. You know, that's not going to sustain you, but gratitude will. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned you, you were just referring to a biblical passage there and like how many other passages talk about be, giving thanks, thanks, thankfulness, gratitude, whichever word you want to use, or I think they're pretty interchangeable, but giving thanks, being grateful. It's all throughout the scriptures. And there's probably not probably there's very good reason for that in there. Yes. To your point. I love that. If you could go back in time, Kristen, and go Back to your younger self, back to your whatever, 18-year-old self, 25-year-old self, pick an age. What would be one thing that you would just love to go tell her? Just trust God and stop worrying so much about trying to control everything and just do it one step at a time, trusting and knowing that each step is in the right direction. You know, being obedient and staying present, reflecting, that gives you that knowledge to take that next step and which next step is the right one. And so we can let go of control when we do that. I think before I was trying to control every little thing and thankfully we don't have to do that, right? It's such a weight to try to think that you have to do it all on your own. So yeah, now I, I don't rely just on myself and there's so much pressure that's gone from that. I love that. It is freeing. It is freeing. Do you have a favorite success quote? maybe an entrepreneurial type, but any, any would matter. Favorite success quote you would want to share with our listeners. Ever since I was a teen, it was shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Cause I think we just should always think big. And when you do think big, you do land not quite there, but then you land somewhere in between and it's great. It's, it's, it's it works. <laughs> I agree. I love that philosophy. I, I like being happy even when I missed the goal or the mark I was aiming for because I wasn't aiming small. Yes. So I love, love that you shared that. What is a habit that may be a daily habit or routine that you feel has been instrumental in your success? Definitely gratitude. That's, that's foremost. When you have a really consistent gratitude practice over time, it just becomes who you are. And it's just so natural that you're just savoring things to be grateful for all throughout the day. Um, I also love to count my wins in the evening. It really helps give me a peace of mind. I don't have to overthink. I can, I can sleep well knowing that there are things that worked out today. And they can be little things like, you know, I called my dad or you know, I put five minutes towards, um, you know, my public speaking goals or, you know, or they can be big things like I was featured here or, you know, we met this goal, whatever it is, the big and small, definitely count those wins. That was two, but. I love it. Gratitude and counting wins at the end of the day, counting wins. Let's talk about that for a second. Do you, is it just an informal thing that in the evening, 
maybe at bedtime? Is there a certain time or place or is it just internal? Is it verbal? Do you write it? How, how do you count your wins? I'm just curious. You know, we spend so much time on our phone and I do love putting notes in my phone and I do it all throughout the day, but I think it's so important to write down your wins. And even when you're writing down your gratitude, because there's something that really happens in the brain and there's some science behind it of when you write down your wins. And so um, I even have that in uh, my three minute positivity journal. I have them reflect on their wins at the end of the day, because it's just so powerful to get into that habit, right? So good. Yeah, I'm, I'm right in notes, Kristen. In fact, in one of my masterminds earlier this morning, um, we were talking about, I was talking about how I, my journal, my morning routine and my journal and the four things that I do each morning that I literally write with a pen in my journal. One is gratitude. The second is others that I'm praying for. The third is praying for wisdom for me, like wisdom and direction prayers. And then the fourth is something I got out of that reading, my Bible reading that morning. And uh, one of the members of my mastermind challenged me to add a fifth area, which he does, add a fifth area of prayers answered, like writing it down to have that to be able to go back to look at, which I haven't been doing that. And I loved it. That was just a couple hours ago. I'm like, I am going to incorporate that. And it sounds, I mean, and then I'm That's sitting counting your wins. I love it's that. Prayers your wins. answered. Yeah, I yeah. love that. I'm going to reframe that because that's so true. And that just builds a deeper faith knowing that the power of prayer and, and holding on to what you know is coming, right? Which sometimes it feels like, you know, it's taken a lot longer than you expect, but when you write it down like that, oh, I love that. That's so good. Yeah. Well, and I just love, like, even if I start, impl or when I start implementing that in the morning routine, but I, I do like that idea of writing down wins at the end of the day too. I may be having a little journal by my bedside. So you got my wheels turning. Thank you. This, is, this <laughs> has been awesome. What, what is one of the best pieces of advice somebody else has shared with you, Kristen? Is there one that stands out? Yeah, be yourself. Be who you were meant to be, what God made you to be. And the right people that align with you will gravitate towards you. I think that's a core message in my life. Yeah. Sounds like a good social media training, too. I know, I know you're applying it in general across all aspects of life, but I'm just saying it definitely applies to social media as well, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Love that. Is there a book in particular? I mean, we, we, we know every, every listener needs to get your book, so feel free to talk all about that if you want. But that, and in addition, is there any other book that you might recommend to the Life's Hard Succeed Anyway audience? A book that I read just this year was the 21 Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. And he is just an amazing writer. Wow. And they just released the 25th edition, I think it was. And it was so good. I could just read it again. It was that great. I love it. 21 Laws of Leadership. Such a great one. Do you ever think about like success? I mean, success is in the name of my podcast and that word gets thrown around a lot, right? One person's definition of definition of success is not my definition of success, you know, and vice versa. Do you ever think about that? And like, what is success, successful living or su a successful life or success in general to, to Kristen? Yeah, success. That's one of my favorite words. So, and it has been since I was a kid and I, I feel like, yes, success is different for everyone, but it's really when you're aligning with your core values and living to make a positive impact, but not just for yourself, but for others and then the world. That's to me what true success is. When you think about the future, Kristen, right now, what is exciting you most? Yeah, I'm excited to connect more with my audience and other people through courses, live events and speaking engagements, because the last few years I've really invested time and energy and practice into public speaking. And I love the ability to teach, but not, not just teach, but connect with people in person, you know, having a platform for 15 years online. I'm loving that in-person connection. It just, it really helps the person transform. And, and that's my goal. I love it. What is uh, the best way for our listeners to connect with you and follow along on your continued incredible journey, Kristen? 
yeah, I mean, I'm on LinkedIn, Kristen Butler. I'm on Instagram at Positive Kristen. And I think all of those are on my website, positivekristen.com. So wherever your favorite social media is. All right, you can be found. And we'll put all those links down below in the show notes to make it easy for all of you listeners to find and access and connect with Kristen. Kristen, this has been amazing. I would love to just give you one final last closing comment. Anything you might want to share with our Life's Hard Succeed Anyway listeners today? Mm, keep going, really. That, it's that simple, but know that what was put in your heart, those dreams, those goals, that purpose, that mission, keep moving forward every day because it can happen and it will happen, but you have to be the one who believes it and then takes that action. So good. Kristen, this has been amazing. You're amazing. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule with your family and your kiddos and all that you've got going on in your business to come on here and share some of your wisdom, your story, and your experience with us today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alan. It was a pleasure. If you love this podcast, grab some of Alan's free resources on his website at alanblain.com, spelled A-L-L-A-N-B-L-A-I-N.com. You can also find links to Alan's Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok there in his contact page. Lastly, if you can leave a five-star review for us on your favorite podcast app, that will get these messages out to more people and it will really mean the world to us. Thanks in advance and make it a great day.